we had a lot of questions on the table, and then we tried to boil down to, well, what's really the fundamental thing? So it kind of came down to kind of a group question that related to diversity. What are the situations, models, talent, organizations, and the kind of momentum these organizations have that we're trying to go to recruit or to uh, interact with? Say that again. Well, we, I'll back it up, and so I'll give you a little bit of context for that, is that we thought we could gain a lot by identifying various organizations or funds who are already focused on some issues that we're interested in, that we could potentially interact with, find a greater context that would unify all of them together. So when I was um, working um, for an artist who was trying to get a grant, I was sort of studying a lot of different um, philanthropic organizations and sort of the new thing in philanthropy is not just to give someone some food or something, but to try to develop, like, you know, like teach a man to fish instead of give the man to fish. So and that's sort of generative in a sense, so I think there's maybe, that's the kind of thing I think we we're talking about, I was trying to find out organizations that already were doing some of this. and. Um, where did she go? Already? Suzanne, yeah, she, she had to leave. Oh, she had to go, but she, yeah, she had identified a group that was working with um, schools and universities in, a, in the East Bay and sort of taking a regional approach. So that was, that's kind of what led to that. So the list off the list again of sort of Yeah, yeah. S situations, models, like role models, the type of talent that we need organizations and the type of momentum that these organizations have, how much momentum, so, so the I scope. You both said the same thing, which is, who's the audience? Right. Yeah, so I, I, I heard that when she said that, yeah. Say the thing who's about, the story for? Say the thing about Matt. There's just a great idea that Michael had about Matt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because we're talking scouting yeah. and mapping. And yeah, we're, ta we're, yeah, so we're talking about scouting. We're talking like... Be in there too. Um, <laughs> um, we're, we're talking about um, if you're a scout, then um, your job is to sort of um, go into uncharted terrain to you know help whoever's the whole party is to um, figure out where to go and where the opportunities are and where to make a base camp and maybe where not to go and make maybe friends with people and find out who are the people who are not friendly and just map the terrain. So maybe what we actually need is a map because that's sort of how we understand things usefully, more more useful than a list. And I think as a scout, you're going to be generating a lot of information. And I think ultimately we're all going to play these roles, maybe with different emphasis, but if we all had the tools to tap into it, um, a map might be a good way to um, drop pins. And you know, now we have the technology to do so. We can all share the same map mm -hmm. from our computers, and um, that could be a pretty useful tool um, that get, to give context for the scouting in itself, mm. which which leads into an interesting thing that we were talking about too, is that um, as a scout, you are, um, I mean, you're playing a lot of different roles. Like you're sort of representing our community, our social action learning organism, to other people. So um, there's that role in the scout as well, not just gathering information, but you're also evangelist. an evangelist of of sorts. Well, planting seeds was the way, I mean, because we talked about yeah. not necessarily evangelizing or recruiting. Right, right. But there are different different things you're scouting about, and, and one is just you're going around right. and you're planting yeah. seeds and maybe doing it in strategic right. ways. Right, and then the, and then the, the, the evangelizing, in, in my experience, and maybe others, is too, isn't to overtly do it is really turns people off and that was the, that was my experience when I was trying to tell people to eat you know raw foods to heal themselves they were telling me well, don't tell me what what to eat but um when I just shut up and did my own thing and people would ask me why are you eating like that and I would explain it to them that was much um mm -hmm. more um good positive uh, interactions and I think people actually maybe took something away with it so how do you attract without preaching yeah. and those, so part that was part of an area we got into which is who is not, what are you scouting for, it's who is the scout? Who is the person who's out here making contact? Who is or the being, the, what are you representing? And, you know, which led me to be thinking about how much our internal
process, you know, we've been scouting amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what you were focusing on, which are things that contribute to learning, mm -hmm. that it, how genuinely mm -hmm. can we be walking that mm -hmm. so that when you're going out, scouting, meeting, doing anything in mm -hmm. connection with this organization or this whatever it is, that you're being mm -hmm. the way you are. There's another flip side of that. Yeah. I took a course in scouting once. For in nature. And the, uh, the, the rules were you open up all your senses first. Mm -hmm. Your sense of taste, your sense of feeling, your test of hear, sense of hearing, your peripheral vision. And keep them all open when you go out. And then you discover things that you would... You know, if you went out looking for one thing, you might not see it. But if you go out with all your senses open, then you can see sp things that you would never have thought you were going to see. Mm -hmm. and, and treading lightly on top of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what you guys are saying is how do you embody what you represent? Mm -hmm. That's one mm -hmm. of the yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a tension in what we're doing, too, between right. in, in this between scouting in the sense of being open and finding out what's there and proselytizing because it is you know we're here to try to come to, to develop a story too and we inevitably will and the scout is going to have an understanding that they're going to be bringing forth and that has its consequences I think so and yet and we don't want to be our, Jesuits right what, <laughs> what is our um, vision is a regenerative society so Actually, what we're proselytizing is to be open yeah. to whatever's there. However, as things, we can right. back to the language. So, is yeah. it worth trying to ask a question that combines a lot of these questions? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if the audience, if you're asking who the audience is, mm -hmm. and you're asking who we should be recruiting, mm -hmm. I would say it's the same people. Exactly. And in and, and you you just said that too. Um, could we delineate some of the attributes of the people that we want to that was another one of our questions. talk to, and, <laughs> and I say that we know a few of them. They are concerned, they are capable, and they are flexible. Because if they are not concerned, capable, and flexible, A, they're not going to want to talk to us. And if they do want to talk to us, we can't do anything with them. So I think we could delineate some of the attributes of the population that we are trying to Address. The low hanging fruit. You had yeah. said, <laughs> how, do we, how do we attract without proselytizing? I actually see that there's a tremendous overlap between going out and, f and on a fact finding mission, on a population exploring mission. Well, we're, we're, we can go to, you know, all the venture capitalists and do that too. They're part of the Silicon Valley too. And it's so nice to, I mean, if you ask someone, um, do you have, you know, five minutes for me to tell you what I'm about? Um, that's very different than my saying, do you have five minutes to tell me what you care about? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, then you're, then you've got them. Yes. It's mm -hmm. the information interview strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've engaged them, and they've started caring about it. Now their motivational center is on your problem, or it's all of our problem, but, you know. So I, I see this as just completely complementary. Yeah, and I think this is something our group was talking about. I think there is a cor cor another, another variation to that question, which is, um, do you have five minutes that I can, I can sum up what I think you care about, which, you know. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I mean, I would go, I would go. Mm, but if you no, could really connect with that person, time. if that mm -hmm. person understood, if, if you could connect to that person, mm -hmm. that you understand, you really understand, not, you're not selling. Mm -hmm. You really can connect with that person. So I think there is a work to be done here. Mm -hmm. But that would be after you, they okay. talk to you. Yeah. That would be reflecting back to them and saying, can I reflect back, rather than saying, do I know it already. Right. You don't Let's get to do that first. We don't need to answer this now. Yeah. 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 Not needing to go to either or. Yeah. In Silicon Valley, there's a statement. In a startup, everybody's in sales. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. In a startup, everyone is I've in sales. I've heard the statement. You, you yeah. do not have